In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Our Lady Choridemtrix, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> well, I guess I'm going to give you an opportunity to exercise your faith with works today, because someone put this on my, my windshield when I was at Father Tito's to say Mass for the sisters this morning, and so maybe it's providential. I need to make you aware of this so that you can exercise your faith in the public sector for the good of especially the unborn because this is from the Connecticut Catholic Public Affairs Conference. The Connecticut Department of Public Health is proposing dramatic revisions to existing abortion regulations in Connecticut and they are asking all Catholics to help stop these changes because the open comment period ends September 20th. I guess you have till September 20th to voice your opposition or to express your, your disapproval. The proposed changes to the abortion regulations would remove sections that, number one, protect some medical provider's right not to participate in an abortion based on religious beliefs. So right there, they're wanting to deny you your your conscience, conscientious objection. Number two, require a medical care for a baby that survived an attempted abortion. And that they want to remove that. They don't want you a medical care provided for a baby that survives an abortion. And three, prohibits abortions in the third trimester with an exception for the mother's health. So they want to remove that as well. They don't want to prohibit abortions as you know, the big thing they, they tried to accuse Trump in the last debate was that, oh no, we're not killing babies like at the ninth month right before they're being born. Well, that's not true. They have been doing it and they want to continue to do that. It says, without any direction from the legislature, the Department of Public Health is planning on removing, is planning on to remove these reasonable provisions that have existed in Connecticut for over 50 years. Whether one is pro-abortion or pro-life, the removal of these regulations is an extreme act and an abuse of administrative authority. The legislature, not unelected administrators, holds the power to remove such long-held protections. And so I'm going to leave this paper out in the vestibule there. It has a little QR code that you can do something, but I think it, you must only, what, what it is is, this is a, trying to go around the, the elected officials and to change laws without proper, the proper authority to do so. So only elected officials through an open legislative process should be able to make such significant changes to existing law. And um, you have um, a deadline is September 20th, so encourage you to to do that for the good of our least brethren, the unborn in our society. I'm sure that if you're in Rhode Island that the pro-abortion people there are gonna do the same thing, so you might be a heads up because it seems that this is, you know, these people are, you know, child killers. Why would we expect them to be acting with normal, um, unreasonable people because if you're killing the unborn you're not reasonable to begin with and this is part and parcel of the problem that our nation faces right now and the other thing you can do is pray pray especially for our nation because this upcoming election is so important for the future of our nation our very existence of our nation is an, is at stake and that's not an overstatement because even Pope John Paul II, I believe, said that a nation that does not protect 
the most innocent and defenseless members of society will not exist. And we haven't been protecting the most innocent ones for a long time. Even though we've overturned Roe v. Wade, we know that there's this deep-seated abortion mentality that has been sown in our country because we've allowed this sin to exist. And the only way that that can be changed, that the only way that it can be undone is through a miracle of grace. And I believe that the miracle of grace is being offered out to us if we'll only do what Our Lady is telling us to do. And that was already told in 1956. In September 25th, 1956, Our Lady and the uh, Our Lady of America spoke to Sister Mary Ephraim. She identified herself with America because our nation was instrumental in the proclamation of the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. Many Catholics do not realize that in the United States that our country had a role to play in the proclamation of the dogma. How? Because the bishops of the United States in 1846 petitioned Pius IX, who was then Pope, to make Our Lady the Immaculate Conception the patroness of our country. And that was one of the things that motivated Pius IX to call this synod of bishops back in December of 1854 and to determine whether or not it was a dogma of our faith. And of course, we know history that he came to that conclusion that yes, the Immaculate Conception is a dogma of the faith. And to, sh to show his gratitude for the American bishops, Pius IX asked one of the American bishops to hold the proclamation while he read it. That bishop who held that proclamation was none other than the future St. John Neumann of Philadelphia, who held the proclamation while the Pope read it proclaiming the Immaculate Conception. And Our Lady appeared to Sister Mary Ephraim in 1956 because at that time the shrine of the, the National Basilica of the Immaculate Conception was under construction and they had just finished pretty much the crypt. And she said that because of, of the role that the United States played in the proclamation of her dogma, that, which is so dear to Our Lady because it's the first grace that she received, and how she identifies herself to Bernadette at Lourdes, I am the Immaculate Conception. She said, I am Our Lady of America. You are, in a special way, dear to my heart because the role that you played in the proclamation of that dogma. And she said, if you will take my image, which she showed her an image of Our Lady of America, if you, if the bishops as representative of your country, will take me in solemn procession and place me in the basilica when it's finally completed permanently so that people can come and make pilgrimage to me because I am Our Lady of America. She said, I will work miracles greater than Lourdes and Fatima combined. Now think of that miracles greater than Lourdes and Fatima combined. And she said, they're not going to be miracles of the body, but miracles of the soul. And that she wanted to make United States a missionary of purity around the world. And when a bishop heard that, he said, definitely that has to be a supernatural message because the last person you would think that would become a missionary of purity is the United States. It'd be like Saul becoming St. Paul. Because our nation has done so much because of the Hollywood mentality, a decadence, that it has pretty much fostered the whole cult of impurity. And that cult of impurity has led to the cult of abortion. Because when you're committing sins against purity and you have another person that comes about because of your, your irresponsible actions, instead of being responsible, you want to get rid of that person. You want to get rid of the evidence of your impurity. So that the cult of impurity in our country has led to abortion, infanticide. 
That's clear. And where does that come from? Well, because it's, many people don't realize the role. You know, the cult of impurity especially is enshrined in our nation with the terrible scourge of pornography. Pornography got its start because the Communist Party of the United States gave an $8 million grant or funded the pornographic industry of the United States back in the 1950s. So probably Hugh Hefner. He, didn't, he wasn't a great businessman. He had some evil people funding him so they could enshrine and to start this vice. They knew once they got the vice started that it would lead, of course, to generating to now it's a multi-billion dollar industry. The, the, the scourge of, a, of pornography. And so we'd say, this is the effects of communism because even in the time of the communist revolt in Russia, one of the masterminds of the communist revolution, he said, I cannot get a, a seminarian to, to leave God by arguing about God. In other words, if I try to argue God not, doesn't exist, I won't succeed but if I can excite his passions to impurity, I can have him, he'll, be, he'll even deny God's existence. And that's what we have. So many atheists in our world today because of the cult of impurity. The pure of heart shall see God. The impure of heart can't see God because they've so clouded their judgment and their vision. So our ladies, when she says, I want to work miracles of grace. It may be like the miracles of grace that Our Lady worked at Guadalupe, which brought about so many conversions of pagans back to, to, to the true faith. That Our Lady wants to work miracles of grace if we will take her in solemn procession. And some people will say, well, well, she has to give us some evidence that we should do that. No, the evidence first, you must do what Our Lady asks you to do and she'll show you. But we are at a certain point in our country that we can see that this is part of the problem in our nation, and especially with the church in our own dear land, is the lack of supernatural vision. We can see that very clearly with the whole COVID thing, the lack of supernatural vision. You might say that one of the ways that the American bishops can reclaim some kind of credibility and restore their, their good standing, you might say, is by doing what Our Lady asks. If they take Our Lady in procession, she'll take care of the rest. But do this simple act. Bring her in procession and pray and, and bring Our Lady to the church that is in her honor. Under the title of Our Lady of America, and this is an important, I believe, this is, we're in the last hours, I believe, of, of truly bringing that about. And we need to pray and to encourage those who are trying every way possible to bring this about. Please pray. That's another thing you can do. That's another, you might, works united by faith is to pray that this will come about, that those who are trying to, to do it will be successful and that hearts will be moved to see the wisdom. You know, that God doesn't ask us to do difficult things. He said if he, if he were to say, go out there and, and, you know, try and watch every vote that's being cast, well, that's almost physically impossible, especially when you have such corruption and such deception. But Our Lady can do wonders. And Our Lady is the one who's in charge of bringing about the conversion and sanctification of people. And I think that's what she wants to do, is she wants to grant miracles of grace, as she said, not of body, but of soul, to change a decadent person who is hell-bent to someone who becomes 
a great lover of purity and wants to restore the family and protect the unborn, not to destroy it. So this is what the challenges that are for, before us. It is, I think, evidence that Our Lady wants to, to do us, uh, wants to bless us. And you know, this is the thing that reminds me of what Our Lady said at, at, at um, Rudabach, when Sister Catherine saw Our Lady had all these rings coming from her, on her hands and some of the rings had no light coming from them. And she said, what are the significance of the rings and why do some of them not have light coming from them? And Our Lady said, these are the graces I wish to give to poor sinners, but they do not ask. Here she's offering us graces and we are so foolish. We put our confidence in our, the wrong things. It's not in princes, it's not in military, it's not in, the reason our nation has been blessed for 200 and almost 50 years is not because we're some kind of bright people. It's because Our Lady has blessed us because we have had a role to play in her Immaculate Conception. I think that's why she's had her loving, providential care watching over us. And we need to finally do something and respond to what the mother is telling us. You know, Our Lady says, do whatever he tells you. And our Lord says, behold your mother. <laughs> It's so, it's like, you know, Genesis 3.15 is always being played over and over again. The characters are different, but the story is the same. The Goliaths that's out there trying to destroy our, our church and our nation is the pro-abortion mentality and the communist, socialist, world order, globalist, they're all the same. They're all part of the new spiritual Philistines who are attacking the true order established by God. Well, David had enough sense to turn to, to God and to Our Lady, especially. I see that in those five stones that he took from the river and he finally struck Goliath. We need to be smart enough to know that our strength does not lie in ourselves. It lies in our turning to God at very important moments. We just celebrated Our Lady's Holy Name the other day. Another liturgical celebration of an event where Our Lady intervened and spared Christendom from being destroyed at the Battle of Vienna when King Jan Sobieski, entrusting his efforts, little they were compared to the forces that he was on, he was like outmanned, he was like 250,000 Turks to 40,000 Polish cavalry. And yet he said afterwards, we came, we saw, and God conquered. Well, this is the thing that we want to pray about. This is another event because as, when I was in Australia, many people came up and said, Father, we're concerned about your elections this fall. Because what happens in America is not just going to affect America, it's going to affect the whole Western world. Because really, the United States still is a bastion of freedom, that inalienable rights that are recognized that come from God and not from man. It's one of the last places that we still are blessed. And we are abusing those rights since Roe versus Wade, because the first of those inalienable rights is the right to life. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We need to pray and we need to especially encourage that this, at these last moments, that we do what Our Lady's asking. It's not... We're doing her a favor, but she's doing us a favor, a much bigger favor than we could possibly ever do. And this is many times God does things like this. You do your generosity, you can never outdo God in generosity. Do this little thing, take Our Lady's statue, put it in the shrine, 
the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, and she will do the rest. Let us pray and ask that these acts of faith always are so powerful because God works miracles through obedience. Obedience to God's command. And we've already, the messages of Our Lady of America were promulgated by Bishop, Archbishop Leibold way back in the 1960s when he gave permission for the prayer and the messages to be released. Some people say, well, he wasn't sure about the supernatural character. No, he knew they were supernatural, but supernatural character he didn't know was whether the visions that Sister Mary Ephraim had were corporeal or just in her imagination. In other words, he wasn't sure what type of supernatural occurrences they were, but he didn't deny and never thought that they weren't supernatural. He wouldn't have released the messages or the prayer if he thought it was just some pious reflection. Pious reflections do not win such favors from God. And this is the message that Our Lady gave, that our nation is to be a beacon of purity around the world. Wouldn't we like to see that for a change instead of being the promoter of abortion and contraception around the world? It would truly be a great conversion, the conversion that the whole world should see and witness through the power of Our Lady's mediation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you.